Cooler Master, Master Air, MA610P ARGB CPU Air Cooler. This is the CPU cooler we will be taking out of the box today, taking a look at it, running down through the specs, see if it may be right for your next gaming PC build here in 2022. This ain't a budget CPU cooler, it is towards the mid range. But we're going to see if it's going to be actually worth the money and what my first impressions of this is today. There will be timestamps in the description below. If there's a certain part of the video you'd like to jump to, you're more than welcome to do so. There's some other links down there that may interest you while you're down there. And don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down to that description box. Without wasting all your time, let's flip you over. We'll take this thing out of the box, run down through the specs, and then I'll be back with my conclusion to the video and if I think it's actually worth the money or not. All right, y'all. Like I said, this is the Master Error MA. 610P ARGB with dual sickle flow 120 ARGB fans. Let's get this thing out of the box and see what it comes with. And uh, I'll give you my first impressions of it when I get out of the box. Just cut the tape here. And well, you guys know that this is a fresh unboxing. I've never looked at this cooler before. Our cooler master is pretty known for the cooler by this point. All right. Open it up here. And first thing we got is going to be your mountain hardware. We'll set that to the side for right now. We do have a manual for here. We do have the Cooler Master manual for it. Now it's going to be the installation guy. We'll need to keep hold of that. And here's your warranty card information on it. Got a little bit of style foam here in the top of it. Well, maybe. Let's see how we get this thing out of the box. Okay, we'll just pull it all out of the box here. And as you can tell, the box is empty at that point. Okay, I do like the packing foam. I do like the way they have this thing packed. That's pretty nice. Alright, pull the top off of it. Set that to the side. And there's the second piece of packing foam. Now empty. Got a little bit of silicon gel here. Super absorbent silicon gel at that. Fancy. Um, just by the first looks of it, the whole housing is plastic. Does look like a pretty nice cooler. I mean, for the price, it should be, right? Um, let's go ahead and pop this top pan off. Um, it does look like it's got a proprietary ARGB connector here for the plastic top plate that hooks into the fan. We'll set the cooler itself to the side. The fans are exactly the same, it looks to be. Um, as far as the fans go, you know, they, they do have a plastic housing around them. They do just seem to be pretty stable fans, pretty sturdy. I mean, plastic housing is a little flimsy, I guess. Actually, looks like it's multi-layered plastic there. Like the name indicates on the cooler, it does have the sickle fan, sickle flow fans to it. Um, they do have a little bit of a, it looks like a special housing on them to go on this cooler. You do have rubber feet here in the four corners to help with the vibration. Um, you do have a proprietary ARGB hair here that connects up into the cooler itself for the top plate. And on this particular fan, you only have a PMW fan header. If you look at the fan on the other side here, you got the PMW fan header right there. And you also have your ARGB lead, which is your standard three pin lead. Um, but since we've already got this fan pulled off, we'll, we'll use this as our example here. Um, the fans themselves, looks like the RPM rating is from 650 RPMs up to 1800 RPMs, plus or minus 5%. So that would be, what, around 2200 RPMs, I guess the fan would go up to if it needed to. The airflow on the fans is a max of 662 CFM max. The noise level is anywhere from 8 to 27 dBA, which means they should be pretty pretty quiet fans. Uh, most households is known to be about 40 dBA, so there shouldn't be much of a much of a noise coming from it. Like I said, them plastic housings on the fans seem to be a little, you know, the outer housing on it anyway seems to be a little flimsy, but the inner bracing seems to be nice and strong on them. All right. After doing a little bit of research, I can't find what kind of bearings is actually in these fans. I don't say no place on the fan. So it is a push pull configuration with the fan set up the way it is. Which I guess when you install it, you'll have to watch the way you install it to make sure the fans is actually blowing the correct way in your case. But that'd be something to keep in mind, I guess. Alright, as far as the heat sink itself, it is aluminum. I don't know if you can see down through there, see how dense them fins is in this one or not. 
but they were pretty compact. Don't look like there's going to be a whole lot of air getting through them. They were pretty thin fins. They are all aluminum. They just don't have no black eyes, no black coating on them. But it really ain't needed with all the black plastic that's on it. Do you have your Cooler Master logo up here at the top, which does look like it does light up. The uh, Cooler Master logo lights up. And you do have a little bit of LEDs on the corners over here on the top plate. As far as the heat sink itself, it is 166.5 millimeters high. So it is a pretty tall heat sink. Uh, of course, the fan dimension is 120 millimeters by 120 millimeters by 25 millimeters. So for the dimensions of the heat sink, you got 116 this way. You got 60 millimeters this way. It says the height is 158. I'm assuming that's from the cold plate up to the top of the bottom of the plastic. And by the time you add the plastic into it, you end up with 166.5 millimeters high, complete. By looking at the bottom here, this one here does have a complete copper base plate to it. It attaches to aluminum inside, and you have six six heat pipes to go through it. And like I said, my sticker keeps falling off the bottom, so I'm trying not to touch that. Um, but there don't seem to be any anything in between the fins to help keep them apart like they should be. But with all the plastic over top of it, you should be all right. I, I mean, you shouldn't be bending your fins anyways. All right, guys, even though a heat sink is just the bare aluminum, I think it still looks pretty good with all the black plastic going and covering it up. Not bad looking cooler. And this does feel like a pretty beefy cooler. Seems like the cooler was well made. It says the total weight of it is 2.47 pounds. It was first available on March 19 of 2021. So it's still a fairly new cooler by the day of the filming of this video. Um, that's as far as the fans and the heat sink itself goes here. Okay, let's see what kind of goodies we get with the hardware mounting kit here. Uh, we'll take a clip open the box here. Now, we do have a ARGB splitter cable. That splitter cable actually looks like it's proprietary. Oh, that goes into a gigabyte motherboard. If you have a gigabyte motherboard, you'll have to use this. If you have an ASUS or ASRock or MSI motherboard, you use this connector. Then it just feeds off onto your regular ARGB header. Here's a SATA power. I guess there's a control box in here, but that is a proprietary connector there with an ARGB outlet on it. They do furnish you with a fan splitter here for four pins. You hook it up into your CPU fan header. Then you hook up both the fans into it. Pretty nicely thought of that. This here looks like it's a proprietary ARGB controller, which goes along with this cable here. I guess that goes if you don't have a ARGB controller header on your motherboard. Then we have your hardware mounting here. That box is empty, so we'll throw it to the side. Let's pull some of this off. We can take a little bit closer look at it here. Okay, now since we've got the mounting hardware out here, we will run down through the sockets that's compatible with. If you're doing LGA, you got 2066, 2011. Dash 3, 2011, 1366, 1200, 1156, 1155, 1151, and 1150. For AMD, you have AM4, AM3+, AM3, AM2+, plus, AM2, plus, AM2 plus, FM2, FM2, and FM1. So this is compatible with a lot of different, for a lot of different sockets out there. All right, guys, by looking a quick look at the instruction manual, you do need to use their back plate. For AMD and Intel, either way, you need to use the back plate. Um, this little baggie here has got your little plastic clips that will go over the edges of these to hold your pins in place for you. And a little bit of Cooler Master thermal paste there, because you will have to add your own, you will have to use your own thermal paste. There is none on the bottom of the cooler, so you will have to apply that. And here's your bag of, uh, looks like the standoffs and the screws necessary to put it in the back plate, depending on which socket you're using. Which, to use these, you will have to look in your instruction manual to see what you actually need to install it with, and uh, depending on the platform you're using. Okay, these brackets right here is for your Intel systems, which they are spring-loaded, so you can't, won't be able to over-tighten them. Can't put too much tension on, which is nice. The Intel ones, they are the C-type C looking ones. Pretty, pretty common looking brackets there for you. Which they do slide depending on which socket you're using. It does have, uh, looks like to be three different notches depending on which socket you need it in. By looking at the website, this does support 1700, but you will have to contact Cooler Master to get your 1700 kit. If you're looking at the new Oro Lake CPUs. Then you get your two brackets here for your AMD sockets. Depending on which socket you're using, it does have different notches here that you need to slide these connecting screws to. 
They give you one for each side of the quarter there. All right, that's pretty well the unboxing of it and everything that comes with it. Let me get reset up here and I'll come up with the conclusion of the video and tell you what I think about it and if I think it's actually worth the money or not. So we took this thing out of the box to show you what all comes with it, which is pretty typical. You know, you got your mounting hardware, you got the cooler itself. I think it's pretty stably built. At the day of filming, this thing runs about $80. I think it's worth the $80. It does have seem to have quite a bit of ARGB to it, and that's what everybody likes nowadays. The size of the coil itself, with them two 120 pans, is a fish pool configuration. The way that heat sink's built with them six pipes, I think it ought to do pretty good on the on the cooling side of things. I will be having an install and temperature testing on this coming up here on the channel. And I'm going to also be comparing it to 120 millimeter all in one to see if you should be looking at 120 millimeter all in one or a tire star cooler like this. Which one's going to be the best bang for the buck at this price point? If videos like that would be interesting to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on. That way you're notified when them videos drop. Also, if you got an air cooler in this price point that you'd like to see me compare this with, make sure to leave in the comment section below and I'll take it into consideration. Y'all don't forget to do that rest that fun YouTube stuff. On your way out here, check that description box. There may be some links down there that may interest you. You all have a good day and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.